Ain't no news like gaming news, cause gaming news is its own distinct category. <laughs> Live service hero shooter Concord is being taken offline less than two weeks after its official launch. Some are calling it an any percent game death speed run. Specifically us, we're, we're calling it that. Game director Ryan Ellis broke the news in an official PlayStation blog post. Ellis clarified that the game will be removed from sale and any purchasers will be offered full refunds while developer Firewalk Studios and PlayStation determine the best path ahead. So the game isn't all dead, just mostly dead. Still, it's a shame that the game struggled since apparently it was in development for eight years. Despite all that work, it debuted to less than a thousand concurrent players on Steam. Apparently the game didn't fare much better on PS5 as players reported long matchmaking times once the launch weekend ended. But it's not all bad news for PlayStation and its fans. Platformer Astrobot launches this Friday and the hype is so strong that copies leaked early. The unreleased game may even get a sequel since the game's official trophies make reference to Astro's next adventure, adding insult to injury for Concord. Oof, we've already greenlit the next one. Astro even appears when you try to go to Concord's now deleted PlayStation store page. He's always there to pick you up when you're down. Good bot. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has admitted he's made some of the worst game choice decisions. That quote comes from a PAX West interview called Storytime with Phil Spencer, even though he didn't read a single Dr. Seuss book or any book. <laughs> My nighttime routine was ruined. <laughs> Spencer reflected on his past decisions, like passing on both Bungie's Destiny and the Guitar Hero series. But in his defense, he might not be the only one at Xbox making bad decisions. Jama Games. I thought that was a person at first. Jama, 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 Stop. Jama Games, the studio behind the highly anticipated souls like Inotria, the last song, have announced the Xbox port of the game will be delayed indefinitely, just weeks before Inotria is scheduled to launch. Jama CEO Jackie Greco, okay, these are not real. <laughs> these are Star Wars names. <laughs> Explained on Discord that while the Xbox Series port is complete, they've been unable to submit the game to the Xbox Store for two months due to an issue on Xbox's side. In that time, no one at Xbox has seemingly been able or willing to help them. And this isn't the first time something like this has happened. The Xbox port for another indie game, Hawk. What, where are these coming from? <laughs> was also canceled after developers spent a year trying to apply for game publication only to be stopped by bugs. This is very different from how PlayStation handles bugs. They let you shoot them. In what, in what is that a I'll reference? Too. Okay, yeah. The original studio behind the Risk of Rain series, Hopu Games? What is that? <laughs> Hapu? Guys, there was no news today, we had to make it all up. Has announced that many of their developers, including its two co-founders, are going to work at Valve. Congrats. The announcement was made in a series of tweets alongside news that the studio is stopping production on an unannounced project, Snail. I know nothing about Snail, yet I'm very sad to hear that. How does that work? In addition to Snail's cancellation, it seems the entire studio is going on hiatus, okay, as its official Twitter account closed the announcement with sleep tight, Hopu games, Hapu something. Still working on Valve sounds like an upward move. Meanwhile, Gearbox, who acquired Risk of Rain 2 two years ago, is having a rather different experience. The game's new Season of the Storm DLC, the first expansion to be fully developed by Gearbox, was a big old bucket of bugs. This is not to mention the disastrous Borderlands movie, except we just mentioned it, just because. But Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford is taking it all in stride. He compared himself to the Beatles, claiming the Fab Four had a 25% hit rate. That's assuming the Beatles expected every song to be a single, which they didn't. Sure. Not every single an album they released was number one in the US or UK, but they were all in the top 30. I would consider that a 100% hit rate. This is now a Beatles news channel. If I didn't report this accurately, my dad would disown me. 
Fair. <laughs> also, they were in several successful- <laughs> Okay, what? We we're still talking about the Beatles? Yes, okay? I'm sorry. Also, one more Beatles fact. They were in several successful films, and even their worst one has better reviews than Borderlands. So, maybe if you spend as much time polishing your work as you do making stuff up, Randy Pitchford, you'd make better games. You're not the Beatles. <laughs> and a great way to check out the- What? What? De Dennis? What happened to you? I paid too much for video games. Don't be like Dennis. Our sponsor, Green Man Gaming, is here to prevent you from paying an arm and a leg for games. <gasps> wow! Ah! Now GameLink viewers can join Green Man Gaming's gold tier membership for free! Giving you access to exclusive discounts, free games, and other fun stuff. Yeah. Right now, you could get Final Fantasy 16, Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2, and God of War Ragnarok for up to 18% off for XP users. Just add the XP Invitation Pack to your cart and enter code LMGXP. Your XP Gold status will be added to your account within 24 hours, and it's yours forever! And you go to the link in the description, check it out. Quick bids are kind of like mini games, except no matter how well you perform, you still win news. According to reports, developer Rocksteady is laying off over half of their QA department due directly to the poor performance of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Personally, I feel like we need fewer QA testers is the opposite of the lesson that should be learned from Suicide Squad. More testing before launch may have caught bugs, like that one which automatically fast forwarded players to the end of the game. And more testing after launch could have prevented the release of game breaking patches that scared away the few players the title had. Just a thought. Ubisoft's Call of Duty rival X Defiant may be on its last legs as player numbers are dropping. Despite doing quite well when it launched in May of this year, a report from Insider Gaming suggests that Ubisoft may end post-launch support if the player count doesn't increase. And that's a threat. Developer Ubisoft San Francisco isn't exactly having a great time already. Apparently an internal investigation just concluded last month after allegations of toxic work culture emerged. But now that the report is out, Ubisoft jumped into action to sweep the issues under the rug. That'll save X Defiant for sure. What does that have to do with? <laughs> Ubisoft, average games, exceptional human suffering. Okay. World of Warcraft's in-game auction house has been broken for nearly a week on certain regional servers, preventing hardworking miners, blacksmiths, and engineers from peddling their wares. It got so bad that players started blocking the entrance with dead end signs, which you can make in World of Warcraft yeah. with in-game poster board and tape. <laughs> Apparently there was a design change that caused a database table to go from 20 to 60,000 rows to tens of millions, which prevented the game from being able to find many of the items that were supposed to be up for auction. The bug seems to be fixed now, but this is a stark reminder that Azeroth's least appreciated class is the middle class. Thrall, son of Durantan, says workers' rights. <laughs> Windows 11 has finally passed Windows 10 as the most used operating system for Steam users, gaining 3.36% in August to arrive at 50.81% to Windows 10's 48.66%, according to the Steam Hardware Survey. Amazing, when did Windows 11 launch? <laughs> Windows 11 must feel pretty good about this, having lost some market share to Windows 10 back in May. Now the exact reason for the surge is unclear. Maybe there was a bunch of Windows 11 handheld sales, or maybe Microsoft started tricking people into upgrading by introducing a floating Windows update button that follows your cursor around like a mosquito. You're just giving them ideas. I'm just saying it would work. And Star Wars Genesis is a total conversion mod list for Starfield and the newest entry in our Play Bethesda Games Without Playing Bethesda Games series. The best way. This collection of mods features an original main story, more than 10,000 rewritten voice lines, and even apparently improves on the game's normal gameplay. There's no lightsabers though, and that requires no explanation if you've ever tried melee combat in a Bethesda game. I was so disappointed. Like there's a sword, it's useless. It looks great, but I feel like I may accidentally fall into a stealth bowcaster build, and no one wants that. But it's no accident. If you come back on Thursday, there will be another episode of Gaming News. It's actually, we, we do this very intentionally. It, we're not, what do you, what do you?